Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the breakdown of the original 34 Pilates mat exercises. These exercises were outlined in Joseph Pilates' book, Return to Life, and every March I like to go through them to just either introduce you to some of the, um, some of the exercises, kind of show um, you guys kind of where some of them came from. Some of these are more advanced and others are ones um, you would have seen before. So if you're new to this work, this is still a good place to start. I would watch part one first where I go through the first 10 exercises and we're gonna go through um, kind of the next block today. Some of these are more advanced. I'm gonna break down the ones I can but there's certain ones that you kind of have to have a prerequisite or an exercise that we did earlier or like a pre-Pilates that you have to be able to do first. So we'll cover those and then take you through some more of the advanced variations. If you know those, you just want to flow through, by all means do that. And this class is pretty heavy into back extension, which is really something we all need. Um, so again, I'll go through some modifications of that as well. So this series starts on our back. I'm gonna take us through just some back loosening exercises because there's a lot of extension. So let's lay with our feet flat on the mat and just have the arms resting by your sides. And then we're just gonna take a little pelvic curl, so tucking the tailbone kind of up so it points up toward the ceiling, just lifting the first couple vertebra of the spine, that sacrum off the mat, keep the neck nice and long. And then roll it down to so really melt through the spine one bone at a time, all the way to neutral. Do this again, tucking the pelvis, peel, curl and lift. You can come a little bit higher, just keep the neck long. The arms pressing lightly into the mat and then fold. Just really try to articulate through your spine. It's a wonderful stretch for the back. And a way to check in. Did I lift on up? If it feels good, take it higher. Inhale, exhale down. And do this again. Tuck and roll on up. And lower. Now moving from the upper part of the body, float the arms up to the ceiling, curl the head, neck, and shoulders up, engaging those upper abdominals, reach through the arms, and then lower the torso back down. Inhale, exhale, curl, and lower. And just take your time, reach through those arms, Lower, try to find lift through those upper abdominals. One more time here, reach, hold. Now float the arms up as you inhale, sinking those abs down, exhale to press down. Inhale, float the arms up, and exhale to lower. One more here, up, and down. And then lower all the way down. Bring the hands to the mat. The first exercise today is called corkscrew. And eventually it does involve an inversion. That's the legs going over the head. So the prerequisite would be roll over, which is on video one. Um, it is the third exercise. So you'll wanna check that out, but I'm gonna go through ways to do this without the inversion that is safe for everybody. So we're going to begin with the legs up at tabletop. They're together. And if you're on, I'm on an elevated mat, so my arms are going to be down at my sides. But if you're on the ground, feel free to take your arms out to the sides. It's going to give you a little more support. And we're just going to start taking our knees to one side. Now as we do this, the shoulder blades stay heavy. The left hip can lift a little bit. And they, we're gonna draw a circle with the kneecap. So they kind of draw, think of it like a U. They're gonna draw down through the middle and come up to the other side. And then we're gonna bring it back to center and go to the left. So it's 
they go left, both shoulder blades stay down. They draw you, so they circle down. They come around to the other side and up. And this is kind of the basis of our corkscrew, making this circle, engaging the abdominals through the whole exercise, keeping the shoulder blades stable, and getting some rotation through our lumbar spine with a low back, inhale, exhale. You can also do this with the legs straight. Just however straight they'll go. Same thing, they go to one side, not so far that you fall over, just enough to lift the hips slightly. You circle down through center. They come through the middle, you wanna do a pause, kinda check in, go to the other side, that opposite hip lifts, you come back to the middle. Inhale to go over, exhale down, around and up. So either way, bent or straight legs, whatever feels good for your body, the, low, the longer you make the legs, the, you know, the longer lever. So they're heavier, a little harder to move, take it to one side, circle down, sweep it around and up, good. And then you can rest. Now the other part of this, as I mentioned, is going into an inversion. So we take, gonna watch and then join me, you can. So you're gonna reach away. You do your rollover again from the first set of work. We roll over. Now your shoulder blades are still anchored and still. You angle your legs to the right. This is gonna put the weight of your body down the right side of your spine. You roll down on that side, head and shoulders stay anchored. So when you get to the bottom, you're gonna end up where we just were with the legs angled. You draw that U shape to the left, and instead of coming to the middle, you roll over on the left side of your spine. And now my feet are angled to the left. I roll down on the left side of my spine. Again, head, shoulders are stable. The legs do that U shape. And I roll up on the right side of the spine. Now that I'm back to the top, I come to the middle with my legs and I roll down in the center. So with that, you can do without the inversion bent leg circles, or straight leg, or take it over. So I'm gonna do the full exercise one more time, because it is meant to be done a little faster. It's also a little easier that way. So take the legs long. Inhale to prepare, exhale, roll over. Angle the legs to the right, roll down on the right. Circle them around. To the left, roll up on the left. Roll down on the left, circle them around, roll up on the right, come to the middle, and roll down. And then draw the knees into the chest, and we're going to sit on up. And that is our corkscrew. Next up today is saw. Saw is done seated upright like we were for spine stretch in the first series. So important the back is straight. So do whatever you need to do with the legs, soft knees, um, straight legs. You can sit up on a little pad or rolled up towel if you want. This exercise begins with rotation. So let's bring our hands to the shoulders and you're gonna turn to one side. Now what we're thinking of is what our spine is doing. It's long, so you create length between, space between the vertebra to open. And we try not to shift in the legs, okay? So I wanna keep my legs, even though they're a little bent, still, and then I come through center. So this is also an exercise known as spine twist, which shows up a little bit later, but it's the first part of our saw. We're gonna turn again. Now from here, we open the arms. So you've only turned as far as what the back can do. And you're gonna take your front hand and reach outside the leg. So it gets the name, there's your saw blade. You're gonna cut off that baby toe with that foot. 
The back hand rotates down, thumb down, and that allows the shoulder to open. And you reach forward, keeping the abs pulled up and in away from the legs. And then we sit up tall, back to our twist, and we come to the center. Other way, start with the hands on the shoulders, turn, inhale. And then exhale, we open the arms and soft forward, flip the back hand, thumb down, looking back. And then lift up tall and bring it to center. So in either way position, try to be tall. Let's go a little faster. Turn one. Pull the abs in and reach for two. Lift up the body. Stay in rotation. Three. And come through center. Four. Other way. Twist one. Abs in. Reach over for two. Roll the body up tall for three and come center. Each time, each side again, one. Up and over, reach. Lift up tall, back to the middle. One more time, twist. Inhale, exhale, over. Lift on up and bring it to center and rest. And there is your saw. We're gonna flip over onto the stomach next for swan dive. So this is where we get into our back extension. Now, quick review of swan. You want to lay with the pelvis. It's really important that the hip bones are heavy on the ground. And our mini swan, the eyes lift up, the shoulders roll back, so the shoulder blades are drawing up and back and you get this sensation of lift through the head, the heart, the chest, and then the legs are long and active, not just resting, but my hips push into the floor and then lower down. So the legs don't have to be up just yet, but really anchor the pelvis. So it's right here, pushing this down into the ground and lower. So what happens in swan dive is we become more of a, think of a rocking horse, the base of a rocking horse. So as I come up, the idea here is I keep the shape of my body, so that curve. So as I go forward, the legs rise to offset the shape, keep the length in the back. And then as I lift, I keep that openness through the chest. So you start with this little rock, Kind of a, a lift and a catch. Lift the hands, catch. Without bobbing the head, so that head stays kind of in position of the spine. And if it feels okay, you can come up to a full press or close to one. You want to make sure that you're not sagging the belly muscles, they're pulled up. And if you're up, then remember as you go down, you want to lift the legs that much higher. So you rock forward and up. And you get this bigger rocking in the body. Now right now I'm doing a lift and catch with the arms. What you can do is when you go down, the arms extend in front of you. So as you lower, the arms reach out and then they catch up. So either way, try it, but again, the eyes kind of stay forward and the collarbones wide and open. Here we go. Inhale, exhale, and catch, and catch, and catch, and one, and catch, and rest down. So anything, it gets the whole back side of the body working quite a bit here. Moving on to single leg kick. We have two exercises really designed to strengthen the muscles on the back of the legs and also our back. And I'm going to talk through, there's a lower body um, part of this exercise and an upper body. So I'm going to talk through each one and then we'll put them together. When we just do legs, you can rest your head down and you just want to have it comfortable. So if you want to turn it to the side, you can do that here. Now, what happens in single leg kick is one leg bends at a time. Now as my leg bends, what I want to work on is keeping this hip bone pushing in 
to the mat. So I'm not bending here, I'm long. And so that's gonna activate my hamstrings. So what happens here is I'm gonna pulse my heel in toward my glute three times. So I go one, and the hip is down, glutes, hamstrings working. Two, there's three. Then I straighten that leg, and it's long and active, and then the other leg does the same thing. Hip is down, I know you can't see it on this side, but it is, or I'm trying to, and then stretch, and they alternate, but the hip has to be down in order for the hamstring to be on. This movement can really be easily missed if you're letting the thigh just kind of rest on the table and like kick this way, right? We're going for length on the front of our body. Two, three. So I encourage you to play with this and make sure that you can really feel the hamstrings. If you're not sure, you can put your hand back there and feel those muscles activate. And even check in with the glutes. Okay, so do that first. Part two, the upper body is held in a, kind of call it like a supported swan. You have your shoulders, um, over your elbows, you're pushing away. It's kind of like we were in our swan dive prep. Now, do you want the ribs and the belly up, but the hip bones down? So this position is just work to be in by itself. Then what happens is we do our kicks. We kick in one, two, three point and stretch, other leg one and two and three. Meanwhile, keeping the lift through the belly, the hips down. This is not an easy position to hold. What tends to happen is the shoulders creep to the ears, right? You lose the lift through the abdominals. So there is a lot happening. It doesn't look like a lot, but it is a lot. Let's go one more each side. Kick, 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 and stretch, and kick, 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 and stretch to rest. Next up, double leg kick. We'll go through the same thing, lower upper body. It's both legs together, like the name says. Knees are wide, so if you're on a Pilates mat, about the width of your mat, heels together. And we'll just rest the head down again. Now the movement is really the same. We press our hips down. We squeeze the heels into the glutes three times. One, squeeze for two, squeeze for three. Then you separate the legs, point the feet, and they go long. Meanwhile, the hips are anchored on the ground. And that is the leg. So it's kick in one, kick in two, kick in three, point and stretch, and again, kick in one, and two and three. Now the upper body, the hands come behind the back and the head turns to one side, elbows fold forward. That's gonna stretch your upper back before you move. The knees are bent, the heels come in. The legs kick while the head is down. So you kick here for three, you kick here for two, you kick here for one. Now as the legs straighten, the shoulders roll back, the arms slide kind of down the glutes, and you lift into extension with the shoulders back, the eyes up, the legs long. And then you fold everything in, but those thighs are active as you come in and you kick for three and two and one, and you stretch everything long here. And let's try it. Lower or whole exercise. One and two and three. Stretch to extend. Again, kick one, kick two, kick three. One more each way. Kick and kick and kick to stretch one more time. Kick and kick and kick and stretch and rest. Hands come by the shoulders, child's pose. I know that is a lot of back extension, which we need, but it's a tough position. So the next exercise kind of offsets this because um, we're doing a rollback. 
Now this next exercise is called neck pull. And the prerequisite to this is really the roll up. And that is exercise number two in the series. This is one that is um, challenging because the hands are behind the head. So I'm on a table where I have a strap. If you don't have one, if you're at home and you can hook your feet under a couch or um, better yet, even have someone hold them or sit on them, you're going to be able to do the exercise. This exercise is not necessarily that it has to look exactly a certain way in terms of your setup, but it's how you feel and the muscles that you're working and when you're working them. So I'm, like I said, using a foot strap. And you may see me have my knees bent or straight or some variation of both. And that's, again, so I can get out of my hip flexors and into my abdominals. So you might see that change a little bit. Um, and this exercise starts in a flat back hinge. So the hands come behind the head. We're up tall on the sitting bones. We're creating length. So this is called neck pull because of the connection of the hands to the head and the reminder that we're always lengthening our spine. So we're tall. And what happens is you hinge back the belly still pulls to the spine, the back is straight, and you just go to where you can, and then we're gonna rise back up. So what I said about feeling, you want to feel this around the center of your abdomen, right, as you hinge. So if you are in a place where like your feet are flying off the ground, you can't hold them, you wanna try to find that where it's good for you. Hinge and rise. And this is hard enough. Right, this might be your exercise. And lift. Okay, the next part is a roll down. Part one, inhale, hinge. Now when you can't hinge anymore, you start to roll. And it comes from your pelvis. And you roll down one vertebra at a time to the bottom. Now, you try to keep your hands behind your head and come up through your ab curl and then you roll your body up and round over your legs. Lengthen out your spine to a flat back, pulling your elbows back and sit up tall. So there's all the parts. Let's try it out. We hinge back one. We roll down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chin to chest. Round up and over the legs. Lengthen to flat spine and rise up tall. Let's take it again. Hinge back. Roll back. Inhale, exhale, roll up. Lengthen and rise and release. That foot strap is a saving grace on that exercise, but allows you to maybe move slower and with control, right? And that's where you want to be focusing on. So one, two, find somewhere to set up, or if you don't have anything to hold it, if you have someone to hold it later and you want to try it, um, I would definitely come back to that one. The next couple exercises are done on our backs in a bridge position. So we're going to come down onto the floor. We're going to talk about the legs here and then I'll put them together with the bridge. The first exercise is called scissors. And the very basic version of scissors is a toe tap. So I have one leg up, one leg down. I'm keeping my pelvis nice and still. And I switch my legs. The whole time, I'm really working on hips square, belly to spine, and my arms are pushing into the mat. So I'm using 
the strength of my upper body to help keep everything still. So you have this option. Option number two is going to straight leg. We want the scissor to happen above the pelvis. So what that means is I have one leg that's gonna come to me and one leg that goes away, but not super low. Because if I go too low, the pelvis is gonna change position. I wanna keep my legs above my pelvis and scissor here, okay, with the legs. So I'm focusing more on my leg that's coming at me, right? And the leg that's going down, I'm thinking of pushing through the front of the thigh. So I scissor here. And then this could also just be slightly bent, but a variation of where we were. That's a little harder, right? Those low abdominals to keep them pulling in. All right, so that's a scissor. Now, there's a second exercise that's part of this next block, which is called bicycle. And what happens in bicycle is you start in a scissor, the bottom leg bends, and it extends. You kind of pedal through the leg position here. You bend and stretch, and bend and stretch. And for today, we're just gonna pedal one way. You can pedal the other, but I encourage you to get one figured out first. And this is a lot of work, right? Low abdominals are working. You're stretching those legs a lot. And then rest down. So that's kind of version one. Version two is done in a rollover. So word of warning here, you have to be comfortable on the neck and you have to be able to do the rollover from part one. So if you're gonna go there, let's try it out. Arms are down. You inhale, exhale, roll over. <laughs> Now, the hands come to the low back, but they're not holding you up. They're just kind of a support, like a wall. The legs come up toward the ceiling. The neck is long, and you're trying to reach your legs up above your hips. So remember, when I said the scissor happens, one leg toward me and the other leg away and I scissor here. It's a very lifted position and I wanna reach the legs opposite each other in this shape. And hopefully keep the neck long so I can still talk to you. You should be able to talk back to me here as well. And then bicycle, the bottom leg bends and then you go into that split and you bend and try to keep the split above the pelvis the best that you can. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, exhale. Split the legs and go for three, and go for two, and one. Now the last exercise today, I'm gonna show the advanced version first. You can follow me if you can, and then I'll break it down. To get into it, you're from here where we were. You rotate the hands out, so they come around the hips, and you reach the legs, and then the left leg is going to come down to the table as the right leg goes up. And we're in a high shoulder bridge, okay? Now if you can't get into this position, what you're going to do is come either down to the floor and work right here, or you're gonna work in a single leg high bridge. The exercise is a lowering of the straight leg, a point and a lift with a high stable pelvis, okay? So let's pick a position, either the high rollover, the high bridge, or down on the mat. So I'm going to take the in-between one here, the high bridge. Let's pick up our left leg. Go for straight. Open the chest, flex and lower, point to lift. So I'm working the stretch both ways, hip extension, hip flexion, two more, one. And lift, and lower, and lift, 
Step that foot down, maintain hip height. Other leg comes up and we go down and lift. Inhale, lower, exhale, lift. Two more, reach and up and reach and up. Step that leg down and lower the hips to the mat. And just hug the knees into your chest, rock side to side. Kind of lift the chin to the chest and roll yourself on up. Okay, if you're still here with me, way to go. <laughs> Again, part two of the original 34 return to life mat exercises from Joseph Pilates. So I thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you are you know, watching this or coming to the rec center, I do these in person on um, Tuesday at 10.30. So we'll be doing part three, and then I'll have the part three video for you next week. So thanks so much, as always, you guys, for joining me, and I will see you next time.